and all. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, a correction is there. Uh, I'm an associate, associate professor in IT department, not an HOD. Okay, so that's a correction in the introduction. Now, uh, let's discuss. Sorry for, the, sorry for the incorrect information, sir. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Now, going into the topic. Last class, we discussed about the fundamentals of memory and the organization of the memory. RAM and ROM was covered in that. Now, today, today's class, I'm trying to concentrate on giving you an idea of cache memory. Going to the topic. This is a diagram which I have already explained in the last class. This shows the hierarchy of the memory. From this diagram itself, it shows that CPU register is on the top, then the cache memory, main memory, secondary and tertiary memory. The cache memory lies on the top because of many reasons. That is very speedy, very costly when compared with the below ones. It can transfer data very fast and compare the size of the memory when compared with the main memory, cache memory, the amount of memory in a system will be less since it is costly. We require cache memory in the system to improve the performance of the system. We will go into the detail and tell the reason. The processor works very fast. When you say the configuration of your PC or your mobile, you, may, you will measure the speed of your processor. When you switch on your computer for the first time. Hello, sir. Hello, Hello. sir. Uh, slide, slides are moving, Nila. Uh, could you please change the slides? In my screen, I can see the changing slides. Uh, I think it's one minute. The slide is checked. One minute. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, sir. I can hear you. Yeah, that's uh, fine. Okay. It's okay. So we were discussing about uh, the speed of the processor. The processor works with very high speed. The data access from the memory, when compared with the speed of the processor, it will not match. For any performance or any execution, it needs the data from the memory. Getting the data for the processor from the hard disk, it's very, very slow. Then, Primary memory RAM was introduced in between that. So the processor, primary memory RAM, that's the RAM, and the hard disk is. But the still, the RAM, the speed of the RAM is not matching with the processor. Still, it is very less. So we, the architecture introduced cache memory between primary memory RAM and the processor. So whatever the processor needs, it takes from the cache memory. Cache memory operates almost at par with the speed of the processor. So the cache memory is placed between the processor and the main memory. This is an efficient utilization to utilize the time of the processor. Going to the next slide. In this diagram, it shows where the cache memory is located. And after the main memory, it's the secondary memory that is a hard disk and all. So the, when the processor requests a data from the main memory, that data is supposed to be there in the cache memory. It can be there or it won't be there. We will see in detail in the coming. If it is there in the cache memory, the processor access the data in a very high speed. If it is not there, let's see what is going to happen in the coming step. Before going into the detail, let's study two technical terms. 
locality of reference two things temporal locality of reference and spatial locality of reference. i'll try to explain in this way take the case of a loop when a loop is running the same data same instructions are executed continuously for many times take another example when you are running a program one instruction is loaded and there is high chance of accessing the subsequent instruction very in the very next step so i have mentioned two things let's come to the technical term temporal locality of reference it means that recently executed instructions are likely to be executed again and again soon so when we take some instructions from the main memory and that is there in the cache memory there is high chance of accessing that content which is in the cache memory immediately again and again and again now spatial locality of reference has another aspect when the processor is executing an instruction there is high chance of executing an instruction very close to that located in the primary primary memory these are the two axes so it's explained in this way temporal aspect whenever an information item is first needed it is brought to the cache memory it will stay in the cache memory or it will remain in the cache memory until it is needed again until it is needed again. it will be there in the cache memory there are some situation where it has to be removed from the cache memory we will study that the second aspect special aspect so when the processor require an instruction or some data which is located in the primary memory that is moved to the cache memory but it is better to move few more information or few more instruction which is adjacent which is located in the adjacent location in the primary because there is high chance of executing that instruction hope it's clear so <clears throat> Just summarizing very fast. Temporal means if one instruction is there in the primary memory and that is brought to the cache memory, that instruction or information or data will be there in the cache memory until it is used again. That is temporal. Spatial means when the processor needs some instruction or data which is fetched from the primary memory and which is loaded in the cache memory for immediate. access by the processor along with that particular information or instruction few more adjacent locations from the primary memory is loaded to the cache memory hope it's clear now cache memory is also a memory where data is stored which is required for the processor whatever the processor is needed that is located that is loaded to the cache there are two types of activities involved in cache if the processor is searching for a data which is in the primary memory if that is in the cache memory already that is called a hit and the data can be accessed immediately now what happens if it is not there it is called a miss it have to be fetched from the main memory and it have to be loaded to the cache memory so hit and miss hit means whatever searching whatever searching by the processor if it is there in the cache that is called a hit whatever searching if it is not there in the cache that is called a miss what are the different possibilities with this hit and miss with read and write operation let's start with the read operation if the processor is executing a read operation and if the content is there in the cache memory that is called a cache hit 
and that can be read by the processor. Now, if it is not there, that is called a cache mess. If it is a cache mess, the content required by the processor will be loaded from the primary memory, main memory, to the cache memory. To the cache memory, and the processor access that from the cache memory. There is one more chance. One more chance. If the processor requires for some data that is not there in the cache memory, it is there in the primary memory. The content in the primary memory have to be loaded to the cache, but it doesn't have a space to load. When we compare the primary and the cache memory, cache memory it's very less when compared with the primary. So the processor requires some data, some instruction, which is not there in the cache. It is there in the primary memory. It has to be loaded to the cache memory and cache memory doesn't have space. In this situation, some content from the cache have to be removed to load this instruction, to load this information. That is cache miss but a block have to be removed or replaced. Replacement algorithm, how it is done, we will see in this class itself. So read operation is there. We have discussed cache hit is there, cache miss, two situation. There is space, it will be loaded to the cache, processor access, access that information from cache. There is no space in the cache, something have to be removed, then it will be loaded, the processor accept, access that. Then what is happening with write operation? Write operation the, during, <clears throat> during the execution, some information are loaded from cache memory, processor accept it, access it, and during the execution, there will be some modification which have to be updated to the primary memory, which have to be updated to the primary memory. That particular block of information was accessed from cache memory by the processor and something updation is required. What will happen? There are different methods. In write operation also, when the processor updates some information and it, when it is required to write, it checks the cache memory. If that particular corresponding block is there in the cache, that is called a write hit. If it is not there in the cache, it is removed already. It is called a write miss. I'll repeat once again. Processor executes a block and information. Some modification is done by the processor. It have to be written back. It have to be updated. When it is trying to update, Processor finds that that particular block is there in the cache, that is right here. If it is not there, that is right miss. Now, if it is a right hit, <clears throat> how the processor will operate, how it is operated? It can be operated in two different ways. Two different. Let me make. primary memory. It has to be updated in the primary memory, for sure. Now, what is happening here in write to There is a modification, and that particular cache memory update is done in the cache memory. Along with that, the same update is also done in the main memory. That is write through. What is write back then? Okay, when there is a modification, 
the processor updates the block in the cache memory at that time the processor update primary memory in write back method it just update the block in the cache memory so the cache memory is updated main memory is not updated it have to be updated in write back when is the main memory getting updated so we mentioned earlier this blocks resides in the cache memory for some more time when another blocks come to that location it have to be removed it have to be removed in write back at the time of removing that particular block from cache memory which is updated by the processor then that particular thing have to be updated in the primary memory or the main memory then how it knows that that is updated this is implemented using a bit called dirty bit in write back when the processor updates a block using write back method the dirty bit is set so when it is removed from the cache memory it can be easily identified yes dirty bit is set that means that there was an update in the primary that block in cache memory it have to be updated to the main memory so that updation will be done if the dirty bit is not set it means that there was no updation no need to update the main memory i hope it's clear then in the case of write miss when the processor updates some portion it have to be written back or it have to be updated but it when it checks that particular block is not there in the cache memory what to do there are two methods one is write around and second is write allocation in write around the processor directly update the main memory correct right. in the second method write allocation the processor it modified some portion it have to be updated to the main memory so it checks in the cache memory it is not there in the cache memory in write allocation method that particular block will be loaded from the main memory to the cache memory and the cache memory will be updated and it will be there in the cache memory the main memory will be updated when that particular blocks is getting removed from the cache memory okay so let's move on to the next slide before that summarizing this cache hit is there cache miss is there for read operation write hit is there and write miss is <clears throat> sorry write miss is there for write operation in write operation write through is there write back is there for write hit for write miss write around and write allocation is there hope it's clear uh, excuse me sir yes uh, uh sir uh, actually uh, so far we don't have any questions so i just want mention something to students uh, hello everyone you can post your questions and queries in uh, q and a session there will be a q and a session available on your screen so you can drop your questions or doubts in there so we can discuss uh, during the q and a session okay i think hope you all are clear about that okay, sir uh, okay sir we have a we have a question okay okay i i can read out that uh, do the instruction control information also will be stored in cache memory for fast execution can you please repeat uh, do, do the instruction control information also will be stored in cache memory for okay fast fast execution uh, whatever the processor requires whatever the processor requires it can be an instruction it can be some data whatever the processor requires that will be loaded to the cache memory irrespective of anything 
Okay, uh, sir, we have another question. How is dirty bit set? Okay. In cache memory, we have seen when it, the main memory is getting updated. Sometimes when there is an updation, the cache memory along with that, the main memory is also updated at the same time. In some other cases, in other, other method, when the cache memory is updated, the main memory is not updated at that time for time saving. When this updated one is getting removed from the cache memory, it has to be updated to the primary memory, to the main memory. For that, there is a bit assigned, it is called dirty bit. When there is any updation in the cache, in a block, cache block, the dirty bit is set. And when that particular block is getting removed from the cache memory, it checks whether the dirty bit is set or not. If the dirty bit is set, it means that, that particular block was updated. It means that it has to be updated in the main memory also. If it is not updated, and if that block is further used in after some other time, that data won't be updated one. Hope it's clear. Okay, sir, we have another question. Any significance for the name dirty in the term of dirty bit? In the term dirty bit? It's called dirty bit. Okay, we can say that. some modification is there, done. Actually, some content was there in a block. That particular block was modified or changed. Some, we cannot say some, it have done something. There's some correction have made. Some modification have made. So it is called as a dirty bit. Okay, sir. Another question. Uh, sir, please explain write allocation once more. Okay. I'll, I'll make it fast. Write operation. So whatever the processor needs, it's taken from the cache. If it is not there in the cache, it is loaded to the cache memory. And the processor accept that from the cache memory. When the processor do some operation, the content accepted from the cache memory, sometimes some modification have, will occur. When these modification occur, it have to be updated in the cache, plus it have to be updated in the main memory. First thing, it has to be updated in the cache because there is a high chance of accessing it again and again and again. We have seen temporal and spatial. It has to be updated in the cache. When the cache is filled, some portion have to be taken out and new one have to be loaded by the requirement from the processor. So, when the cache memory is updated, the main memory also have to be updated. In the write operation, there are different methods in write hit. That means that when the processor is updating the content and that particular content is there in the cache memory, that is called write hit. In write hit two methods, write through and write back. In write through, when there is an updation that is done in the cache memory, along with that, the main memory is updated then and there itself. It requires more time. Next thing, write back. The content is updated in the cache memory. It is there in the cache memory. It is not removed. So we don't need to update the main memory since it is there in the cache memory itself. But the content is updated. Then a dirty bit is set. At any point of time, if this particular block is removed, it checks the dirty bit. It means that the content is modified. If the dirty bit is set, it means the content is modified. Then the primary memory is updated using that block. Hope it's clear.
Okay, sir. Uh, sir, another question is that what is the difference between memory access time and memory cycle time? Okay, that we have seen in the last class, but I'll explain in a brief way. Memory access time is time taken. The processor has given an instruction to read something from the memory. You start your stopwatch when the processor gives an instruction. When that instruction is complete, you stop. The time taken for that is the first one. The cycle one, the second one is the time delay between two independent instructions done subsequently. That is a definition. That is explanation. Uh, okay, sir, we don't have any questions. So we can continue the session. Let's go to the next slide. As I mentioned, the size of the cache memory is very less when compared with the main memory. So whatever is required by the processor have to be loaded to the cache memory. Since the cache memory, the size is very less. We need to take out something, replace something, then load something again and again according to the request by the processor. It needs a mapping function. Since the cache memory is slow, we are going to discuss three different types of mapping fu functions. First one is direct mapping, second associative mapping, third one set associative mapping. The second one associative mapping is also sometimes called fully associative mapping. To explain this, I think that it's better to take an example. Here, in this example, my address bus is of 16 bit. You have a pen and paper, you write 16 bit. How many locations it can address using 16 bit? You write it on that. And my cache memory size is 2048 words. Main memory is 4096. Don't worry, we will have a diagram for it. Then it will be more clear for you. So without wasting time, let's go to the next. We will explain with the diagram and we will come back. Listen to this diagram. You can see the heading cache on the left hand side and the main memory in the right hand side. Looking into this diagram itself, you can see the size of the main memory and you can see the size of the cache memory. The main memory, the whole thing is divided into blocks. It is called pages. And the cache memory is also divided into blocks. The main thing you have to keep in mind, the block size of the main memory and the block size of the cache memory is same. Then what is the size of the block in my example? In block zero, there are 16 locations. Block zero, 16 location. Block one, 16 location. Block 127, 16 locations. Cache memory is also the block size is same. So in block zero, I can store 16 words in the cache memory. Then what do you mean by direct mapping? Coming back to this. Block J of the main memory maps into block J modulo 128 in the cache memory. Okay. It will be a confusion for you. Coming back to this diagram. How many blocks are there in cache memory? 128. That is 0 to 127. How many blocks are there in main memory? That is 4096. That is block 0 to block 4095. That many blocks are there. Processor may require any block from the main memory at any point of time. And that block have to be loaded to the cache memory. How the mapping is done in direct mapping? Direct mapping is the simplest mapping method. It is very simple. Block 0 goes to block 0 of the cache. 
block 1 goes to block 1 in the cache from the main memory block 127 in the main memory goes to block 127 in the cache memory okay then where does the block 128 have to go block 128 goes to block 0 you can see the color similarity in this diagram so block 256 also goes to block 0 in the cache block 4095 goes to block 127 in the cache from the main memory hope it's clear now if you go back to this slide the first it is a simple technique second sentence block j of the main memory maps into block j modulo 128 of the cache memory hope it's crystal clear for you block 0 goes to block 0 block 127 from main goes to block 127 of the cache finished cache but block 128 goes to block 0 hope it's clear okay now how it is done how the mapping is done i'll try to explain four bits that is a least significant four bits of the 16 bit is used for finding the word finding the location in each block you can see a main memory address diagram below with three columns here the four bits the last least significant bit that four bit is used to identify the location of each block why the four bits two raised to four that is 16 in a block there are 16 locations so four bits is required to address that four 16 location in each block right then the next seven bits it's used to find out which block it is two raised to seven is 128 so that seven bits is required or is enough to find out which block is 2 raised to 7 is 128. Then 5 bits for tag. What do you mean by tag? Tag means in the cache memory, you can see some heading tag. I will try to explain the tag with this diagram. With this diagram. So I am just addressing, addressing 0 to 127, 0 to 127, the first thing in the main memory with this 0 to 127, then 128 to 255, then 255 to the next, then in the last 4095, how many blocks are there in this? It is 0 to 31, 0 to 31. If I divide my main memory, my main memory that is up to 0 to 127 then 128 to the next 255 if it goes there, like i can have 32 that is 0 to 31 32 different blocks so to address which among this 32 i need this 5 bits and that is called tag bits Hope it's clear. Let me make it very fast once again. The last, sorry, the least significant four bits is used to identify which word in each block. Then the seven bits, two raised to seven, that is 128, it's used to identify which block it is. Then the five bits, it's a tag to identify which among these 32 is there so this kind of mapping is done in direct mapping this is very simple mapping is very simple but it have a lot of disadvantages also advantages 
it's very simple that is advantage what is the disadvantage of this if block zero from the main memory the page is loaded to the frame block zero here in the cache that block zero can only be loaded to the block zero in the cache from the main memory even if the entire frame of the cache block 1 block 2 up to 127 is empty and block 0 is already there from the main memory in the block 0 of the cache memory that is filled by block 0 from main memory and the entire thing is empty now block 128 is asked the content from the block 128 is required by the processor that block 128 can be fitted only in block 0 of the cache which is already occupied but the entire rest of the thing is vacant but it cannot be fitted to any else the block 0 which is loaded by block 0 of main memory has to be removed this is one of the main disadvantage that's why it is called direct mapping every block of the main memory is directly mapped to a particular location in the cache hope it's clear what do you mean by direct mapping why it is called direct mapping and how the main memory address is used to find out the location in the cache memory and advantages and disadvantages also this diagram this explanation we have already seen this diagram okay next is associative mapping fully associative mapping the main disadvantage of direct mapping we have already seen to overcome that disadvantage we can use associative mapping in associative mapping the main disadvantage of the direct mapping it's overcome it means that any block of the main memory can be loaded to any block in the cache memory whichever is free it can be loaded with that now look at this diagram the same diagram here the block in from in my example block 0 have 16 locations in main memory and in cache memory also in main memory block 0 have 16 location in cache memory also block 0 have 16 locations why that 16 in block 0 again hope you remember we have discussed this spatial reference and temporal reference there is a high chance of asking for the next subsequent information which is already executed which is currently executed by the processor so it's better to keep 16 or more it's up to you or up to the organization block have not one more than that the entire block is transferred from the main memory to the cache memory it will only increase the performance okay coming back here the block zero of the main memory can be loaded to any block whichever is free in the cache memory there are advantages and disadvantages the main advantage is if there is any free location in the cache memory that can be loaded then what is the disadvantage to get some data or to check the required data by the processor it's there in the cache memory the processor have to check the entire cache blocks to find out whether it is there or not that is one of the disadvantage main advantage also we have mentioned now look into the main memory address as i mentioned in each block there are 16 locations we require four bits to identify each location so four least significant bits are reserved for that or it is used for that, to identify which location in a block next 12 bits from this 16 that is 2 raised to 12 that is 4096 
2 raise to 12 4096 yes i am right 204096 2 raise to 12 you can see the blocks in the main memory also 4096 blocks so this tag is used to identify that so the main memory address four bits are reserved for finding a word in the block next 12 bits it's tag and it is reserved for that now we have explained associative mapping the advantages and disadvantages the main disadvantages if the processor needs some data the processor have to check the entire blocks to find it out whether it is there or not the advantage is if there is any location vacant in cache memory and if the processor asks something which is not there in the cache that will be loaded from the main memory to the cache memory in the block whichever it's free right ne next go to set associative mapping the main disadvantage of associative mapping is we have this it have to check all the way in set associative mapping i'll explain with this diagram we need only few tags look at this diagram here the cache memory again it has 128 blocks each blocks in my example 16 locations and in the main memory in my example 4096 location blocks and in each block it have 16 words 16 words so the total number of words that can be stored in this example is 4096 into 16 that is the total words that can be stored in main memory now coming to this set associative mapping here in the cache memory block 0 and block 1 it's combined and called as set 0 block 2 and block 3 it's set 1 this is called two way set associative we can make a set with 4 that it will be called four way set associative i will explain once again two blocks in this cache memory it's combined to form a set in my example it can be four that will be four way set associative here it is two way set as what is advantage let's see with this example itself so look into this cache block zero block one that is set zero block two block three that is set one block four block five that will be set two and in the last block 126 and block 127 that is set 63 so totally 64 sets will be there totally 64 set will be there keep that number 64 in your mind now the blocks from main memory there is some rule block 0 will go to set 0 I repeat block 0 from the main memory can go to any location in set 0 that means that block 0 from main memory can fit into block 0 or block 1 nowhere else see this is a combination of what we have studied the last two the last two one direct mapping plus associative mapping this is a combination of these two why i am saying this is a combination of that two is yes. block zero can from sorry the block zero from the main memory can fit into any location of set zero hope it's clear then block 63 will go to the last set then where does this block 64 go block 64 will go to block set 0 sorry block 64 in the main memory will go to set 0 and the block 64 in the main memory 
can fit into block 0 or block 1 of the cache i can easily say and here you can find you can you can implement the modulo function okay that is block modulo 64 it's clearly it will be easy to find it out which set it will go so i'll repeat once again block 0 will go to block 0 or block 1 which is set 0 right hope it's clear now again the four four bits in the main memory address it is used to identify the location in each block because in each block there are 16 locations 2 raised to 4 that is enough and here the most significant 6 bits they are used to identify the tag 2 raised to 6 is 64 that means that 64 tags are there the 6 bits are used the most significant bit it's used to determine the tag and in the middle 6 bits it is used to identify the set you do one thing you write block 0 up to block 63 in a line like this diagram like this diagram sorry like this diagram block 0 to block 63 then block 64 to other line and it goes up to 4096 4095 if you write according to that that you can address that whole set using the six bits i repeat once again the least significant bit four it's used to identify which location from each block then the next six bit it's used to identify which set it is the m must be its six bit it is used to identify the tag location okay now we have to discuss about replacement algorithm before that we have discussed three mapping techniques that is direct mapping associative mapping set associative mapping then since the cache memory is very less in size and processor require data and the cache memory is filled it have to be replaced in the case of direct mapping we don't require any replacement algorithm what do you mean by replacement algorithm so if the cache memory is filled which block you will remove we have to implement an algorithm in such a way that the efficiency will be maximum we have some algorithm to remove a block we will discuss that but take the case of the first mapping technique that is direct mapping technique in direct mapping technique we don't require any replacement algorithm what is the reason in direct mapping a block from the main memory it can be fit only to a particular block in the cache memory if that particular cache memory is filled it have to be removed so we don't need any particular algorithm for that it have to be removed take the case of other set associative or fully associative associative if the cache memory is filled and the processor needs some data we can remove in associative we can remove any block which block have to be removed here comes there are different algorithm for that first thing is we will discuss least recently used algorithm it keeps a track which block is referred for the last which is not at all referred for the last time last few time or which is least recently used okay 
that particular block which is least recently used can be removed and the new block have can be loaded that algorithm is called least recently used and there is another Hello, algorithm first come first out also yes Hello, sir can you hear me sir uh, we have only 10 minutes left so okay just one just to remind you okay so i'll do my mind we have only 10 minutes left make it fast okay Okay. But if there is any doubt, we can ask at the end. Let me finish it off. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's fine, sir. Least recently used algorithm. It's clear for you. Another algorithm is FIFO, first in, first out. Which block is loaded first? It can be removed. So these two algorithm or random removal. These are few algorithms. Now, some performance consideration. If the processor is asking for a block or data which is there in the cache it's very good so it's better to find out a performance ratio for that a common measure of success is called the price of performance ratio the performance depends upon how fast the machine instructions are brought to the processor and how fast it is executed it will be very fast if the required data is in the cache and we can measure the performance now hit rate and miss penalty you know what is a hit what is a miss the extra time taken to bring the desired information to the cache that is a miss penalty okay hit rate if it is everything asked by the processor is there in the cache it's very good but normally it won't happen so we can calculate the hit rate also the processor has has this many and it this many was there so we can calculate the hit rate also but is 0.990% that is excellent so regarding the cache we have studied what is cache memory what are the functions of cache memory what is advantage of cache memory what are the replacement algorithm what even be hit and miss so I hope the cache memory, it's almost clear for you. Now I'll wait for your doubts. Okay, thank you, sir. So I can quickly go through the questions. And the first one is, uh, can, you, uh, can, can you explain use of tag in direct mapping? Okay. In direct mapping see the case of the main memory how many blocks are there four zero nine six blocks are there in each block how many locations are there 16 locations are there so when the processor asks for a particular data which is located in a block in the main memory that that is not there in the cache it have to be moved from the main memory and it have to be fitted into the cache memory so which block it has to fit in direct mapping hello yes sir hello yes hello okay uh, yeah am i audible uh, can i move to another question yes sir i i didn't i didn't complete it so the four bits in the okay. word, four bits in the word that is least significant bits is used to identify the location in each block and the seven bits it is to identify the blocks two raised to seven is 128 that is 128 is a maximum blocks in the main cache sorry in the cache memory so it is used to identify the blocks and five bit tax two raised to five is 32 okay come on next question please okay sir okay so the next question is is direct mapping associated with the hashing function mapping uh, it's not clear I was it was not audible okay uh, I can repeat once again is direct mapping associated with hashing function mapping is direct yes please yes okay sir uh, then another question why can't we make the cache memory as large as main memory 
now i uh, think you have to go back to the memory hilaki memory hilaki in the sense cache memory to implement that much is very costly so it is not possible to build cache memory or incorporate that much which is equivalent enough or the same size of the primary memory so we cannot make the primary memory of the same size of a hard disk all your programs are stored in the secondary memory that is a hard disk when you are executing your c program take that example which is stored in your hard disk to execute that program listen to this statement every program that have to be executed or every program that is being executed have to be stored to the primary memory before execution okay the size of the primary memory is very less when compared to the secondary memory because the primary memory is much costly than the secondary memory but the speed of the primary memory when comparing with the speed of the processor it's very less the primary memory cannot it's not possible to supply data according to the speed of the processor so we implemented cache memory cache memory the speed is very high but the cost is very high so the size of the cache memory is zero sorry the size of the cache memory is very less when compared with the primary memory next thing if you are more interested just go and read level 1 cache level 2 cache and level 3 cache there are different levels in level 1 cache which is very close to the processor level 1 cache is very high speed than compared to the level 2 or level 3 hope i have answered okay sir we have another question which mapping is used by windows and linux is there any mapping that is not used at all it it is independent of the operating systems okay uh we have another question please explain associate mapping once again okay i can explain this diagram just to make it clear i am taking an example this is the example my main memory or in this example there are 4096 blocks 4096 blocks each block have 16 location 16 words in each block any block from this main memory have to be loaded to the cache memory to which location it have it have to be loaded we need to identify for that tag is required so main memory address the most significant 12 bits are used for tag tagging so 2 raised to 12 that is 4096 which is the block size of the main memory it's used as a tag and next four bits which is each <coughs> the least significant four bits that is used to identify which location in each block in associative mapping any block in the main memory or from the main memory can be loaded to any of this blocks in the cache memory so it has to be tracked for tracking we need we require 12 tags 12 tag bits that is enough only difficulty is to find it out whether the data is there in the cache memory the processor have to check the entire location in the first direct mapping the required data can be located only to a specific location nowhere else in this thing any location can be used to locate any block from the main memory i'll be able to provide you notes for this hello okay 
hello sir actually uh, we have couple of questions more but we are actually running out of time i think we have answered almost the questions so uh, if we can we have to find the questions in a document i'll be able to provide you the answers for that yes sir of course sir we can do that and uh, sorry for the uh, participants we cannot answer some of the question but we have done almost uh, questions and uh, thank you for thank you for the session sir it was very interesting session and uh, hope everything was clear and uh, thank you for the session and sharing the knowledge with us as well as the students thank you for everyone for attending the session thank you thank you take care thank you sir